This Island Earth is a 1955 American science fiction film from Universal International, produced by William Allen, directed by Joseph M. Newman and Jack Arnold, that stars Jeff Morrow, Faith Domerg and Rex Reason. It is based on the eponymous 1952 novel by Raymond F. Jones, which was originally published in the magazine Thrilling Wonder Stories as three related novelettes, The Alien Machine, in the June 1949 issue, The Shroud of Secrecy, in December 1949, and The Greater Conflict, in February 1950. The film was released in 1955 as a double feature with Abbott and Costello Meet the Mummy. Upon initial release, the film was praised by critics, who cited the special effects, well-written script, and eye-popping Technicolor prints as being its major assets. In 1996, it was edited down and lampooned in Mystery Science Theater 3000, the movie, a spin-off of the popular syndicated movie riffing television series Mystery Science Theater 3000. Topic. Plot Dr. Cal Meacham Rex Reason is flying to his laboratory in a borrowed Lockheed T-33 shooting star jet. Just before landing, both engines fail, but he is saved from crashing by a mysterious green glow. At the lab is an unusual substitute for the electronic condensers that he had ordered. Instead, he discovers instructions and parts to build a complex device called an interocitor. Neither Meacham nor his assistant Joe Wilson Robert Nichols have heard of such a device, but they immediately begin its construction. When they finish, a mysterious man named Exeter Jeff Morrow appears on the interocitor screen and informs Meacham that he has passed the test. His ability to build the Interocitor demonstrates that he is gifted enough to be part of Exeter's special research project. Intrigued, Meacham is picked up at the airport by an unmanned, computer-controlled Douglas C-47 aircraft with no windows. Landing in a remote area of Georgia, he finds an international group of top scientists already present, including an old flame, Dr. Ruth Adams Faith Domerg. Cal is confused by Ruth's failure to recognize him and suspicious of Exeter, his assistant Brack Lance Fuller and other odd-looking men leading the project. Cal and Ruth flee with a third scientist, Steve Carlson Russell Johnson, but their car is attacked and Carlson is killed. When they take off in a Stinson 108 light aircraft, Cal and Ruth watch as the facility and all its inhabitants are incinerated. Their aircraft is then drawn up by a bright beam into a flying saucer. Exeter explains he and his men are from the planet Metaluna, and are locked in a war with the Zagans. They defend against the Zagans with an energy field, but are running out of uranium to keep it running. They enlisted the humans in an effort to transmute lead to uranium, but time has run out. Exeter takes the Earthlings back to his world, sealing them in protective tubes to offset pressure differences between planets. They land safely on Metaluna, but the planet is under attack by Zagon starships guiding meteors as weapons against them. The defensive ionization layer is failing and the battle is entering its final stage. Metalunas leader, the Monitor, Douglas Spencer, reveals that the Metalunans intend to flee to Earth, then insists that Meacham and Adams be subjected to a thought transference chamber in order to subjugate the free will, which he indicates will be the fate of the rest of humanity as well upon Metalunan relocation. Exeter believes this is immoral and misguided. Before the couple can be sent into the brain reprogramming device, Exeter helps them escape. Exeter is badly injured by a mutant while he, Cal and Ruth flee from Metaluna in the saucer, while the planet's ionization layer becomes totally ineffective. Under the Zagon bombardment, Metaluna heats up and turns into a lifeless, radioactive sun. The mutant has also boarded the saucer and attacks Ruth, but dies as a result of pressure differences on the journey back to Earth. As they enter Earth's atmosphere, Exeter sends Cal and Ruth on their way in their aircraft, declining an invitation to join them. Exeter is dying and the ship's energy is nearly depleted. The saucer flies out over the ocean and rapidly accelerates until it is enclosed in a fireball, crashes into the water and explodes.
Topic: Cast. Jeff Morrow as Exeter. Faith Domerg as Ruth Adams. Rex Reason as Cal Meacham. Lance Fuller as Brack. Russell Johnson as Steve Carlson. Douglas Spencer as the Monitor. Robert Nichols as Joe Wilson. Orange as Neutron the Cat. Topic: Production. Principal photography for this island Earth took place from January 30 to March 22, 1954. Location work took place at Mount Wilson, California. Most of the Metaluna sequence was directed by Jack Arnold. The front office was apparently dissatisfied with the footage Newman shot and had it redone by Arnold, who unlike Newman had several sci-fi films already under his belt. Most of the sound effects, the ship, the interocitor, etc. are simply recordings of radio teletype transmissions picked up on a short wave radio played at various speeds. In a magazine article, the special effects department admitted that the mutant costume originally had legs that matched the upper body but they had so much trouble making the legs look and work properly they were forced by studio deadline to simply have the mutant wear a pair of trousers. Posters of the movie show the mutant as it was supposed to appear. Topic: Reception. Topic: Box office. This Island Earth was released in June 1955, and by the end of that year, had accrued $1,700,000 in distributors' domestic United States and Canada rentals, making it the year's 74th biggest earner. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Critical response. A review in the New York Times by Howard Thompson opined. The technical effects of this island Earth, Universal's first science fiction excursion in color, are so superlatively bizarre and beautiful that some serious shortcomings can be excused, if not overlooked. Wit. In Variety wrote, Special effects of the most realistic type rival the story and characterizations in capturing the interest in this exciting science fiction chiller, one of the most imaginative, fantastic and cleverly conceived entries to date in the outer space film field." Philip K. Scheuer of the Los Angeles Times was also positive, calling it, "...one of the most fascinating—and frightening." Science fiction movies to come at us yet from outer space. To the camera and effects men must go the major laurels for making this wonders visible and audible in awesome technicolor and a soundtrack that is as ear racking as it is eerie. The monthly film bulletin was less positive, writing, Faced with the wonders of space, man's reactions prove, as usual, dreadfully limited. The dialogue, especially in the faked-up romance between Doctors Meacham and Adams—remains resolutely Earth-bound, while the ending is simply a spatial variation on the conventional curtain. Joseph Newman has done his best to make his characters as intriguing as his special effects, but they have neither the stature nor the expression. Since its original release, the critical response to the film has continued to be mostly positive. Bill Warren has written that the film was the best and most significant science fiction movie of 1955. It remains a decent, competent example of any era's science fiction output. In Phil Hardy's The Aurum Film Encyclopedia, Science Fiction, the film was described as a full-blooded space opera complete with interplanetary warfare and bug-eyed monsters. The film's space operatics are given a dreamlike quality and a moral dimension that makes the dramatic situation far more interesting. Danny Perry felt the film was colorful, imaginative, gadget laden sci fi. At the film review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes, the film holds a score of 71%, based upon 14 reviews. 
Greater Milwaukee Today described it as an appalling film. Topic: In popular culture. Castle Films released a 9 to 12 minute depending on projector speed 8 mm cutting from the film and retitled it War of the Planets for the home movie audience beginning in 1961. In Explorers 1985, one of the movies that Ben played by Ethan Hawke watches this island Earth. In that movie in this one, the character builds a device with help from an alien so that they may meet. A brief homage to this island Earth is seen in E.T. the Extraterrestrial 1982. E.T. turns the television on during a showing of the film, at the scene when Cal and Ruth are being abducted by the aliens and Cal says, They're pulling us up. A segment of the television series Wonder Woman season 2 episode 10, 1977 uses space battle footage from this and the alien planet is also recycled footage. The album Happy Together 1987 by the Archipelago group The Nylons featured a track titled This Island Earth. The video game Zack McCracken and the Alien Mindbenders 1988 contains key references to this movie, such as large-headed aliens disguised as humans, communications through interstellar teleconferencing, and an aircraft pulled into a flying saucer. Shock rock metal band GWAR's fourth album, This Toilet Earth 1994, and its companion short-form movie Skullheadface contain numerous references to this movie, including the title, An Alien with an Oversized Brain Posing as a Human, and communication between aliens using an interstellar teleconference device. New Jersey punk rock band The Misfits included a song tribute entitled This Island Earth on their album American Psycho 1997. The Alien Orbitron, The Man from Uranus, from the 1960s toy line, The Outer Space Men, also known as Colorform Aliens, is based on the mutant. In the Star Trek TOS episode, All Our Yesterdays, Kirk tells the Sarpedon prosecutor that he comes from an island called Earth, an obvious reference to the film. A huge fan of This Island Earth, Weird Al Yankovic has featured the Interocitor in both his film UHF 1989 and the music video for Dare to be Stupid. The Metaluna Mutant is one of the many alien monsters held captive at Area 52 in Looney Tunes, back in action. It was later one of the aliens released by Marvin the Martian so that it could stop the main characters from taking the Queen of Diamonds card. Experimental pop artist Eric Millikan created a large mosaic portrait of the Metaluna mutant out of Halloween candy and spiders as part of his Totally Sweet series in 2013. This Island Earth is the film within the film in Mystery Science Theater 3000, the movie or MST3K, the movie. In order to maintain a 73-minute running time and to accommodate several host segments. This Island Earth was edited down by about 20 minutes. Michael J. Nelson said that this Island Earth was chosen to mock because, he felt, nothing really happens, and, it violates all the rules of classical drama. Kevin Murphy added that the film had many elements that the writing crew liked, such as, a hero who's a big-chinned white guy scientist with a deep voice. A wormy sidekick guy. Huge four-headed aliens who nobody can quite figure out are aliens there's just something different about them. And a couple of rubber monsters who die on their own without the hero ever doing anything. 